So to wrap things up on the modeling part of the series, I'd like to take you through modeling this radio. Um, I picked this because it's actually quite simple to build and we can separate it into different parts. And um, basically there's, there's everything in it like polygon modeling, we use spline mask, we will do a little bit of subdivision surface modeling on the outer part here. And yeah, you find some information, details about the dimensions and sizes of things here. And I would say let's start with the maybe most difficult part and that would be the perforated front plate here for this uh, little radio. Okay, so let's go into Cinema 4D and the first thing I like to do is to get the basic dimensions in so that we have somewhat of a reference uh, of what we uh, can build. So let's switch to the front mode here. Um, so the guidelines, I will use splines to kind of get the basic shape and sizes uh, in. So we have basic dimensions of 235 millimeters in width and 155 in height. So let's type that in and the height will be 155. So this will be more or less the dimension of our radio. So I also got the dimensions for the perforated front plate, which is 210 by um, 125. So let's do a copy of this. Let's call that front plate. And we do, what was it, 210 to 125. Um, right now I'm centimeters, uh, so we want to make sure that's in millimeters actually, so we can just type 12.5 uh, and then 21 centimeters in here, so we have to correct that for the front plate that will be 23.5 and 15.5. So now we're working in the, in the right dimension. So as you can see the front plate is a little bit smaller the uh, outer size, let's call it outer, is the outer dimension of our radio. Now for the front plate we have a little bit of a radius here in the corner of the, this plate. So let's dial that in. Um, you can decide how how much rounding you like to have. I think I will go with a little bit less, maybe something like this. Um, but yeah, there's no like real definition for this. So we have to eyeball it more or less. All right, um, let's do now the holes, punch the holes into this perforated plate. So for this, um, I want to stay in the spline workflow and use uh, a spline mask to get the those holes in there. So the first thing I like to do is do a circle and we have to scale that down. So that would be about 1.5 millimeters or 1.6 millimeters. So something like this. And as you can see here in the center, we have this little hole. Okay, so next thing, I'm gonna use a cloner to clone those holes and we will go in the x direction and in the y direction. So the x direction it was something like I th think 32 and on the up it was something like 18. Let's check that. 18 by 32 at 1.6 millimeters. Okay let's see. I think they're far too far. Um, so the step size is too big. Um, so let's scale that down a little bit. And there we go. So now we have to just figure out um, how the step size of those holes should be. So I think 1.55, that's too less. Let's go to 1.6, uh, not 1, 0 point I meant. So that's too much. So as you can see, we really have to be very precise here and for this, let's do more or less the same thing. All right, maybe a little bit 
more. And let's go with one seven. It's maybe a little bit too much. So let's go with something like this. Um, okay, so I think the size of the holes it's, is a little bit too much. So maybe we go down to 0 0.5 actually. Um, and this looks fine. Okay, let's switch to perspective view just to check if this seems all right. And this seems good so far. So now we get like the base for our perforated plate. Um, let's put that into an extrude. And as I will think, this will not work just right off, out of the box. Uh, first thing we can do is we can reduce the depth of this kind of thing. Um, so the extrude expects one spline and now we have like two splines in here or actually more than that because we have a clonal. So let's try to connect this with uh, the connect object and let's see if this will fix our problem. So no, it doesn't at this moment. So what else could be the issue? So I'm not sure why this is not working at the moment. Let's see if we go to the connect thing. So I think we have to adjust the tolerance here a little bit. Um, so let's scale that down a little bit and see if this will lead. And there we go. So it wasn't the tolerance was the weld actually. So uh, we don't want to the connect to weld all those together. So we wanted to just connect it without welding it. And this will do the trick. And then we have this kind of effect of having this perforated plate. Now I think we can uh, reduce the size here, the depth even further. Uh, and as you can see, it's takes a second to update. So this is already quite uh, heavy for Cinema 4D to calculate. Um, what we could do is also uh, if add some rounding to the cap. So this those edges wouldn't be as hard. Uh, we can try that, but it will increase the calculation time even further for this kind of thing. But um, yeah, let's let's try it out. And it has to be something uh, very low. So yeah, let's see. There is the update and yeah, that looks quite nice. So with this, the front plate is already finished. Okay, let's put this into another null object and call this front plate. And there we go. At this point, uh, it's advised maybe to save your project, um, put it in here, call it radio, uh, just to make sure. Okay, so now that we have actually built the um, perforated front plate, let's build the second part of the radio. And that is the well main part or the main box here in the back. Um, we will do this with the subdivision surface approach and also notice we have those little feet here uh, on the bottom which we also model using the subdivision surface um, mode. All right, um, so let's actually go back. It's not the end yet and we will start with a cube and we have to set it to the size as our guiding frame here which is 23.5 for the width and then for the height we got 15.5 centimeters and let's switch back here to see the depth it's 13 centimeters so this will be the size of our radio for the box we can move that maybe back a little bit and now if we have a closer look uh, on the details of this shape, you can see we have a quite large corner radius over here on the outer part. Then we have this kind of inset on the front and then we have an uh, scaled down inset to the inside, which is set back a little bit um, 
to yeah make way for the perforated plate um, so yeah let's do this step by step um, so I just want to make this into an editable object and then go to edge mode I uh, select the ring selection tool to select our most uh, outer corners and then go to the bevel tool to get the bevel of this thing in so let's say this is about one centimeter uh, let's do quite a bit of subdivisions here uh, to get this kind of smooth looking um, we have to check check out if this is actually a good approach or if we should go with less than this maybe maybe we maybe let's try with with less than than the five so let's do it with two for now let's see how that works out I'm um, a bit worried about the inset and maybe some artifacts coming in here but uh, yeah let's see so next thing um, on the front we do an inset for the front part and then we can do another inset which is roughly the size of the perforated plate and as you can see we run into a bit of an issue here that actually we if I scale it down too much we get this artifact in the corners so just leave it uh, a little bit larger and then we just use the scale tool to make that kind of work as we want it to be all right and then switch to the move tool and let's move this back a little bit something like this uh, maybe not that much yeah something like this all right so this is the basic shape let's do a little bit of cleanup here immediately and do another inset on the inner part so that we get a nice quad based topology here on the corner um, same thing for the back let's go to the back do an inset here it can be quite large and then we will put this into a subdivision surface object and you can see we have some things going on here so we have to introduce a few more cuts so let's protect our borders here with doing this and this cut another cut here another cut on the inside another cut maybe here um, what we can also do is maybe add another like protective cut in this direction but we will see in a second if we're gonna need this um, but so far this looks good just a few cuts on the back here and there we go this would be the shape so now as you can see the shape of our radius kind of going down here bulging down so we, we I want to this radius to stay straight uh, until we get to the corner so what we have to do is uh, just add another kind of protective cut over here and over here and this should fix the issue and as you can see um, this is now looking nicer so let's do the same thing on every corner so that we get a nice um, straight lines on each corner all right so that's it about the outer kind of shape so the next thing we can tackle is uh, the feet here or the stands for the bottom part uh, before I do that let me just move my radio a little bit closer to the front plate here yeah something like this okay so I will hide the work plate for now and then let's see what we can do here on the bottom part so to add some of those stands in we need a little bit more detail and geometry uh, let me first of all make a center cut here holding shift so the line will snap to the center uh, we can also do this on the top just to make sure this is uh, nice and even uh, and we can actually also do this here and here but uh, it wouldn't make it will not make much of a difference but just to keep this a bit 
tidy. Okay, so um, the next cut I will do is basically to get an offset from the front part. Uh, so because I want the feet to be a little bit inset to the inside. So just to get a bit of geometry in, I will do a cut there and there. So one on the front, one on the back. Um, and then I think we will, maybe we do one feet on here. So hold shift again, so you get the snapping. So those two lines will actually make out the, or are the base for our feet here. So I select those two. And now what we can do is we can use the bevel tool to scale this up a little bit. Uh, and we can reduce the subdivisions to zero because we don't want any subdivisions in there. So that would be the base size of our feet there. Then switch to surface mode. We select the inner part and then we will do the bevel again. Bevel will extrude and inset at the same time. Maybe like this, then switch to the move tool and we just move that down a little bit further. So the feet is a bit higher basically. Okay, that looks about fine. Now, if I turn on the subdivision again, you can see um, that's not kind of the result we like, but we can fix this. We just need to introduce a few more details in here. So first of all, let's try to get a loop selection. Um, not here, but that's a bit tricky to select the kind of loop I'm after. There it is. Okay, then use the slide tool, hold command, and I just slide this thing to the outside. And then again, this will give us kind of this protective offset border. And now we can work with the borrowed edge method to actually only add the details uh, inside here. So with the knife tool, um, let me think for a second if it's maybe smart to add one cut here already. Yes, let's do this cut, this loop cut. Um, same thing here at about 50% maybe. And then with the knife tool and line mode, we will do this kind of borrowed edge method. So there's a bit of manual work here to do, but it will pay off at the end. Just make sure to kind of keep the distance of all those cuts the same, but it's not too too bad if it's not super accurate. Um, so now the way back to this side and then our loop is finished and now we can actually go ahead and delete or dissolve those inner kind of uh, geometry oh no that was actually not correct um let me think i did some mistake here uh i think what i'm rather after would be cut which goes like this and then we can get rid of this kind of shape and this and why do you don't do the cut there and no, it was too much there we go and then I can dissolve this shape so this is um, yeah more like the thing kind of topology I'm after here. We can even move this kind of loop. No, it's not working yet, so we have to clean that up. And I will do it uh, nicer on the other side then, maybe. So a bit hard to see here. This and this can be removed, and then the one here in the middle as well. If, you, if the dark triangle appears, you can just move one of these points 
a little bit more to the inside and then you will get uh, the nice flat looking geometry here. Okay, let's fix it on this side. Um, so I, I want to go back like to the to the end here to get our borrowed edge method in. Remove those, remove this. And again, we have this kind of issue here with the triangle, um, but it's not too bad. In here, edge mode, and then dissolve. Okay, now two cuts are missing. We have to do one cut about here and one here, and I offset this a little bit farther from the from the top. Um, and now if I turn back on the subdivision surface object, you see we get a nice looking stand here. Now there's some artifacts left, as you can see. Um, we can get rid of those um, in a second, but I think it will first do the other side um, and then we'll fix this. So again, now I will do it in the right way. I will start my cut here from the outside and then we go all the way up here like this and then around to the other side. So again, as a reminder, we're doing this to keep the geometry or the detail. There's a cut too much. Let's clean that up manually. Um, what happened to you? Now let's go back a few steps. Um, we're doing this just in order to keep the detail and the amount of ge geometry higher in the area where we are working right now. And I don't want to get all the, the detail and cuts in the other parts of my model. So this is the this is the area where this is kind of happening. Okay, so now it works. And now we can again now we only have to delete like this part. I mean it's not super necessary. It's just to keep things clean and to teach you good topology tactics. All right, so this looks nice now. Um, but as you can see, we still got the artifacts in here. So let's try to get rid of those and I will do a loop cut. And we will cut or make some protective cuts. So the issue might be from those polygons being stretched out too far and they're kind of tearing apart. So um, if we add a little bit of protective geometry around in a loop manner around this kind of thing uh, this should actually fix the issue and yeah it does so now we have nice little feet over here so let's get the camera back in the right orientation um, and yeah so this is the outer shape of our radio done let's quickly turn on the lines to see if this is okay and as you can see we have more details down here but the geometry is kept nice and tidy in this area and all the other areas are not affected by this kind of thing okay so this is like the body shape of our radio we have the front plate let's go back to the ovary and see what else we can do so we have two knobs left and we have this kind of dial left for the selection of the frequencies. So I think this is rather simple now. Um, and the frequency dial has a diameter of 80 millimeters. So in this case, we can just start off working with a primitive um, and we will use the tube for that. We change the direction to Z direction. Now in the radius, we have to type in half of the diameter. We can just, I mean, it's simple to calculate, but you can also do a calculation here and type in 80 um, divided by two. Um, and actually that's in centimeters. So 
of course we have to go down to four centimeters. Now for the inner radius we just pick something which is a little bit less than the outer radius and if I move to the front you can kind of see what's happening. I definitely want to increase the rotational segments. Um, we can go high here because we don't want to do much of manual work here on this kind of thing and now from the height we have don't have any measurements for this so we have to kind of eyeball it or pick something which we like maybe two centimeters is a bit too much so let's go to maybe 1.6 centimeters um yeah and that could that could fit now as you might see um the shape here of the of this kind of outer ring is a bit a little bit smaller on the top and wider or bigger on the lower part of this so it's kind of these tapered uh, kind of form so we could use a taper um, for this but I think we can also do another thing and what we can do is we can make this into a polygon object Let's get rid of the height segments first. We don't need them in this case. Um, and then make this object editable to a polygon object. Go to edge mode and then it will just loop select, the loop selection tool, the outer ring. And then I can use the scale tool and scale this up a little bit, maybe 10%, something like this. Now seems to me that this is maybe a little bit too big um, so if we actually go back to this kind of image uh, it seems that maybe the 18 millimeter is, is not correct here so what we can do is of course we can just scale it down a little bit and then see at the end maybe if we need to make it bigger so I'm a bit on the edge here I think maybe it's maybe it was okay actually just have to move it a little bit more to the up side part here okay so then the next thing um, I like to do is I like to do the plastic kind of cover for this kind of thing so the part which you see on front and then also this part uh, so for this I think I will go with the oil tank because the oil tank will give us the right shape. So let's go with radius uh, four centimeters and the height, uh, let's go two centimeters for now. So this is right from the start, actually a quite fitting kind of thing. So as you can see, it bulges a little bit to the outside. That's exactly what I read. Now, if you want to center this, we can just make it a child of the tube, then go to the commander, shift C, and say reset transform, and then it will be right in the center of our tube. All right. Um, now let's have a closer look though. Let's move it out a little bit. Um, so what I don't want, I don't want the back side of this kind of thing. I only want the front side. So let's increase the amount of segments first here so that it's a bit more smooth and I think we cannot immediately tell that we don't want the front or back side so nope so let's make it editable and then use the funk break selection tool to select the back side have to increase, decrease, decrease the radius. So, okay, let's do loop selection here and just get rid of this kind of thing. Select all, go to extrude, extrude a little bit, but make sure create caps is on and therefore we get this kind of filled shape now back to the object mode move it back and there we go this is basically 
this kind of shape. Then with the oil tank still selected, let's select this kind of outer part, do a right click, and then go to, let's say split. And this will be like the front cover. Um, move this out a little bit, then again, extrude tool, extrude with caps activated and then I will just do a little bit of scale so to scale this down a little bit and then I will loop select the edge so we really want to round this top edge bevel tool bevel this give it a bit of subdivisions there and then also this edge I like to bevel a little bit Okay, there we go. So this will be this kind of front kind of cover thing. What we can do here with the uh, clear plastic part, we can actually set that to X-ray in the basics tab of the attributes. So we can look through this. And then the last two things which are missing is on the one hand, the kind of disc on the back, which will display the different frequencies so outer radius 4 make this also in z direction increase the amount of um, segments put that into the tube again commander reset transform to make that centered move it back so the uh, perforated plate is covered all right now let's have a back uh, look back here to our reference image as you can see we have this kind of um, plane in here or a little cube which will show the uh, indicator for which frequency is selected uh, and I think the frequency plate is actually not that far back but a little bit more to the front something like this maybe so now for this kind of frequency indicator we can just probably use a cube and I will start off by making it very tiny, drop it into the tube, reset transform to center it. Let's have a look, there we go. Um, so it's a bit larger on the Y direction. We can also move it up a little bit and then for the X direction, maybe something like 0 0.4 and then on the Z direction, it's like really, really small. Okay. All right, just let's add a fillet for this. So this looks fine. I can move it even further up. And then in this kind of thing, we have this red little dot. And we can again, for this, just use the disk. Maybe we just do a copy of the disk. The outer radius will be very small. And then we can do this as a child of the cube. Reset transform and then I move this to the top. And I think it's actually inside of the object, but let's keep it here just so that we don't forget about it on the outside and this will be our dial. So it doesn't matter for now that we don't have any inside geometry here um, as long as we don't do any close-ups of this. So as long as we stay here on the outside, this should be fine. I think I want to move it even further to the top and yeah, make sure that it doesn't stick out of your um, clear plastic thing here. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, now one last thing for our tube. We still need to do a little bit of edge beveling here. And we just do this manually with the bevel tool, no subdivision surface kind of things. So something like this, and then I double click here on this edge and again, a little bit of bevel there and there we have it this is now our frequency dial and the only thing missing now are our little knobs here on the down uh, lower part so they should have a diameter at about 20 millimeters so let's start off with I think a cylinder might be the best choice here so same thing again turn it to z direction for the radius we need 
about one centimeter and for the height maybe something like two centimeters let's move it out and see how that looks like yeah seems about fine maybe i want to go even a little bit smaller with the radius um like this and then again uh let's i want to taper it um and make the lower part a little bit bigger like we did with the frequency shape over here um I don't want to go into subdivision surface modeling here, so I will increase the amount of rotational segments by a bit. Let's say maybe something like 60. I think it doesn't matter too much. Um, and then we can make this cylinder editable. We don't need any height segments though for now. So make it to polygon object, go to edge mode, select the lower loop here and then T for scale and move this up something like this maybe and maybe a little bit to the top as well um, okay so that's it for this kind of thing and as you can see the knob here is built in a way that it not what well, this kind of extrusion is not going to the top of the knob but rather it stays a little bit on the down side it's a little bit inset to the to the bottom here um, so in order to do this let's add another cut maybe about here and then I want to select a few of those polygons just make sure that it's an even amount of number and well then it just hold in the command key and move it up upwards so therefore we get this kind of shape well, there's something done here which is not correct so if you want to be super accurate you might want to go to the surface mode here select the the surface and just scale it down so that it really is like a flat thing and then do an inset um, no not this this one this inset I mean um, like this and then I want to extrude it to the top like like so and then scale it down here as well so it doesn't penetrate the outer shape and by this we have like really the volume of this kind of knob will be probably like the real knob and therefore if we use subsurface scattering um, so that the light kind of goes through this object a little bit it will calculate correctly so in this case as mentioned before i don't want to do um subdivision surface on this because it's not necessary in my opinion um, and makes things unnecessarily complicated but what i like to do is i like to select those kind of edges i like to bevel and let's see how this turns out if i now use the bevel tool in chamfer mode uh, to get the kind of nice chamfered edges over here yeah that seems that seems nice so far so we have our knob here and now we just have to position this move it back to our radio over here and it, maybe you just want to rotate it a little bit like this and then we want to make a copy of this I switch to the uh, global coordinate system hold the command key and drag it to the right and then move this a little bit to other directions so that we have a bit of variance uh, in here okay let's see how far the distance is of those yeah maybe you want to move it a little bit closer here something like this okay so that's actually it that's the whole modeling process we can do a little bit of cleanup here in our hierarchy let's call this frequency dial and then we have the knobs we can put that also in a null object and we can get rid of our guiding frame from the beginning and then Put all of this in another null object and call it 
radio. And then we have our final model of our radio build. So a little bit of loading time here because of the quite heavy front plate. So if you have an issue with this and it um, takes too long for cinema to display or it's just sluggish and slow, you can, after you finished it, you can just go to the extrude and make that editable. And then it also calculates a little bit, but then you get a polygon object out of this. And then this thing is smooth as you are used to in Cinema 4D. Um, just one little, little final detail maybe, if I go back here and you, it might be hard to notice, but there's a little bit of a darkening here in the background in a circular way. And that it's where the actual loudspeaker of the radio might be. Um, it's very subtle, but we can use this effect to add a little bit more realism to it. And it's super simple. We just add a disc in the background here, make it smaller though by a lot, maybe five centimeters. Um, and then we just kind of sandwich it between our perforated plate and the backside of our um, body object. And we can just call that maybe speaker. And later on, we can just give this a dark material and then we will see a bit of a difference in, in the backside here. All right, so this is the process of building this kind of radio. And I hope you learned a thing or two. And in the next session, we will then continue with lighting.